Hey everybody, what's up? What's up? Oh my God, God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. God is the greatest, the best, the goodest, the excellentest. Oh my God, I don't even, there are no adjectives that can describe how wonderful God is. I'm here, I'm alive, I'm well, thank God for that. I am blessed, I'm highly favored, I'm bold, I'm confident, I'm beautiful, I'm amazing, and I'm saying all of this humbly because, you know, I want, I believe in speaking positive over our lives. You know, when I was growing up, when you talk like this, people would think that you are trying to be cocky, you're trying to be pompous, you know? And what has happened is that over time, we believe if we speak highly of ourselves, and I'm not saying highly in the sense of lifting ourselves above another human being, but thinking good about ourselves, um, it almost became, uh, what should I say, almost like you're committing a crime as though, hey, bless up Elijah, is as though you're committing a crime, as though you're doing something bad, as though you're doing something negative. And you know, the funny thing is we were going against what the Bible says. It says, think on things that are lovely, think on things that are just, things, think on things that are honest and of a good report. Now, I'm not saying for once that you should be um, oh, thinking about yourself in a selfish manner, me, myself, and I, and you're this, and as though you're above somebody else. No, what I'm simply saying is to cultivate those things that God has said, those attributes, as well as the Beatitudes, as well as the fruit of the Holy Spirit, you have to think positive. Now, you think highly of yourself, highly, but not above somebody else. All right. So when your mind and your thought now begins to turn into the positive, that is how you will execute, execute a positive living. Don't you get it? So you can't be thinking, oh, I am this in a negative sense. I am, you know, all the negative um, adjectives that you can think of and expect to live a positive life. It is impossible. It is impossible. No, you, you can't expect to be beautiful and keep calling yourself ugly. You can't expect to be bright or brilliant and smart and keep saying that you're dunce. It is impossible. The two don't work. So you have to speak highly of yourself in a controlled way, not pompous, not in a sense where you're haughty or, or you're above somebody else, but no, in a sense where you can become that world changer, you know, that environment changer, the space that you're in because of the thoughts that you generate. Now I'm listening to Earl Nightingale powerful words you have to kind of listen to him when it's kind of quiet because he has a very deep bass voice though and he said one of the reasons why a lot of persons are not do, they do not prosper in terms of wealth in terms of peace of mind which internal which um, ultimately affects their health and their spiritual life is that they have practiced the opposite way of living and what has happened is that you find a lot of persons, they die really at 25, they die spiritually, they die financially, somewhat socially. When they become 60, 65, they retire soon after they die, living an unproductive and non-prosperous life. What then is your point of living? And I'm not saying this to, to be negative or to be pessimistic, but I'm asking you the question. If it is that at age 25, you die spiritually financially socially possibly educationally 60 65 you retire few years later and i mean literally very few and minute years later you die then what was the point of your life you see what i'm saying so what he's saying is that if it is that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and a cattle on a thousand hills belongs to God, why would he not want you to achieve wealth? Why not? Why not you? What difference are you or what difference basically are you from the other wealthy man over there? He or she is not made up of a different fiber, you know, human fiber, you know. If you cut them, you're going to see blood. If they're shot in the right places, they will die. They can develop diseases like anybody else. They eat like anybody else. They sleep like anybody else. But there is a difference with their operations in their daily living. The things that they do. I'm listening to these motivational speakers and I'm saying to myself, I'm wondering what it is that I really and truly learned in school. Like, I'm wondering. <laughs> because... 
basically everything that they taught I, I really wasn't taught in school you know why because a lot of the things that we are taught, we are taught really how to work for a background master. We really are taught how to go back and work for somebody else without creating that wealth for our own selves. And the reason why in, a, in many of my videos you're going to hear me talk about wealth is that too many of us are poor. I'm not, I'm even come against that. Too many people, I don't even want to say us. I, I, I'm tr I don't even want to speak that anymore over my life. Too many persons are poor, especially among the black race. And it therefore means that we were created, we, sorry, we were taught some, a, a magnitude of subservience, of being beneath. When the Bible, the Bible clearly says that we are the heads or we are the head and not the tail. We are the lenders and not the borrowers. We are kings, we are queens, we are prince, we are princesses. And yet we live not according to what the Bible says we are. There is a scripture that I came across recently and it says we should live and be merry. I saw it for myself when I was looking at all the scriptures that talk about money in a healthy way. And it says we should live and be merry. So as your soul prosper, that is how God wants you to prosper. For I know the plans I have for you, plans not to harm you, but to prosper you. They're all over the scriptures. When we think of the men of old, not perfect men, but godly men and women, they were wealthy people. Abraham, Abraham could be because probably was, he was probably wealthier than Bill Gates. Jacob, who rested with God all night until he was blessed. And that is one of the fundamental things they, they talk about. I listened to another a preacher yesterday, T.D. Jakes, in fact. And he was saying, why it is that we don't prosper the way we want to financially? Because we, we don't go at it determined every single solitary day. We have to be at it. We have to write down our goals, meditate on it, meditate on the things that are good, things that are honest, things that are just, things that are of a good report. Whatever goal, whatever desire, whatever dream you have, you have to med meditate on it day and night until heaven's gates open. That's say we're going to give her or going to give him what he or she desires. I feel... Awful because I feel like I know I'm going back to school after attending school and spending all of this money going to prep school, going to high school, going to university, going back to the university. And it is now I'm learning how to really live a fruitful life. And they're all interconnected. You can't separate them all. It has to be the spiritual for the physical to be good. It has to be the spiritual, the physical, for the financial to be good. The spiritual, the physical, physical, the educational, the mental, the psychological to be good. They're all interconnected. That is why you need to live a balanced life. They're all interconnected. One is not devoid of the other. Whether you want to believe in it, yes or no. Even the people who may not believe in Christ, they try to find some kind of spiritual being that they consider. In a, because they're all interconnected. That's what I'm trying to tell you. They're all in interconnected. So when I speak of wealth, I'm not speaking it devoid of spirituality. Because every good thing, every great thing, every excellent thing comes from God. That is why I preface these videos by saying giving God thanks. I preface my videos by saying it is all because of God. So we can't achieve wealth without these interconnected elements. The spiritual, the physical, the emotional, the psychological, the educational. But the thing is the application of it. Because knowledge without application is really not knowledge at all. That is why I said to people, I don't want somebody to tell me that this person is brilliant. And all the brilliance is kept to themselves. How I'm gonna, how are we going to know that you're brilliant when it is not executed, when it's not shown? A truly brilliant person tries to uplift somebody else to become brilliant or even better. Whether you want them to come better or not, there will always be somebody better than you. We have to accept that as human beings. Because as time goes on, people get smarter, more brilliant, more wise, more creative, more dynamic. All of these things is just a part of life, whether you want to accept it, yes or no. But the fact of the matter is, we have not because we ask not. And when I say ask not, we don't go at whatever good dream, whatever goal it is that we set, we don't really go at it. 
So we just follow what we have been trained indirectly and directly sometimes. So it no make no sense here. I can't bother. Or I'm not too talented enough. Or I'm not bold enough. I'm not too pretty enough. Or I'm too black. I'm too brown. I'm too white. I'm too fat. I'm too slim. You see all the different excuses we come up with. And that is why we don't achieve. Just like our Bill Gates achieved. Or uh, uh, Steve Jobs achieved at the time. Or whoever else you want to make the comparison with. They're not made out of different fibers. If you shoot them in the right place, they're going to die. If you cut them, they're going to bleed. If somebody dies for them, they're going to cry. But what is the difference that has caused them, that have caused them to excel above the average person? And that is hard work. That is incessant, consistent determination. Deciding that they're going to achieve that goal that they've set out without any reservation, without stopping, without ceasing, never giving up. If it means day and night working at it, that is what they had decided to do. And that is why they achieved the world that they achieved. And it has nothing to do with that day because they're more, t more talented than you are or talented than I am. It has nothing to do with that. It is the application of their knowledge. And sowing the seeds or sowing the seed of determination every single day until they achieved their goals and their dreams. And I'm not talking about those persons who like the scammers and all of them people who achieve an overnight something. Don't worry. Easy come, easy go. Easy come, easy go. That is the only thing I can give for those kinds of persons. I'm talking about people who genuinely achieve prosperity and wealth. And I'm talking about prosperity in the, in the original meaning. I'm not talking about this in terms of any political side. I'm speaking about whether, whether you want to say progressive, pro prosperity, whatever it is. And those, all those words are positive words. And those are the words we should be thinking on. We should be, that's the only way we have to root out a bad habit. You know, what I mean? it's just like a man who smokes or a woman who drinks, right? And sometimes they have to, what I, when I was watching this program, it, um, it used to come on life element. Um, it's intervention is the name of it. So what they have done is persons for years who struggle with, with um, some drug in, the, in one form or other, they would go to one of those intervention programs, you know, for a few months to get help and, you know, try and live a better life. But they, they will tell you the first two or the first week possibly or the first two or three days when the person can't get the drug is as though they, they, it's, like they, it's like they're dying almost because their body craving for it is because they got so used to it. But you know why? After weaning them like when you wean a child from its mother, you understand? And with determination and, and this, this drive to say, I'm going to, I am going to fight this addiction no matter how long it takes. And the ones who overcome, overcome because they didn't give up. That's what it is. Do not give up. Not give up. Do not give up. So when the negative thoughts come, and it happens to me, you know, because what I've done for me, per, you know, I've typed out, because I'm writing kind of bad still, you know what I mean? And I've typed out all my goals, all the things that I'm specific on it. Trust me. If you look at my goals, you're going to say, this girl crazy. Really? But I'm going to achieve them. I'm determined and every day as as. As, as little as three times a day, maybe. Three, four, five times a day. I read it out. Then it takes me about maybe two minutes. And I read it out. In my lunchtime, I read it out. In my break time, I read it. I don't care how it wants to sound. It, it, feel, it feels weird. It feels fake. It feels uh, like, oh my God, this is really not me. But you know what? I'm going against the tides of negativity. Because I, have a, I am tired to see us as a black race being subservient. Me want to see, just like how you say a whole heap of rich Chinese or a whole heap of rich whites and, and so I want to see a whole heap of rich blacks. And that is why I do those, these videos. Because as I'm learning, I'm not there as yet, but I see myself there. I see myself there because I'm retraining my thinking. No longer I'm going to think, oh, I can't do this. I'm not talented enough or I'm not gifted enough or I'm not brilliant enough. No longer. I am brilliant enough. I am talented enough. And I'm going to get even better. I'm going to get even better. With practice, I become better and better and better because I have a goal or goals that I will achieve with God's help. I am achieving them. 
So I'm listening to Earl Nightingale today. First time listening to him because I've been listening to mostly Les Brown and listen to Zig Ziglar once. Excellent. And the Earl Nightingale spoke on a 30-day challenge. So you write down your goals for the next 30 days. What it is, that whatever it is. If you want to get a big house, bigger than Jamaica, whatever you want to get. You want to get the best car ever. You want to get wealth, health, whatever it may be. And every day you look at it. Morning, noon, night, supper. So you get it for your breakfast, you get it for your lunch, you get it for your supper, you get it for your dinner. And you look at it and you meditate on it and you read it out aloud. It may, you don't watch how it feels to you. It, you, you remember you're now retraining yourself. And you rec because what is doing now? Your brain is now working in a different manner. And it works in a different manner and now you're able to say, oh my gosh, an idea comes to you, I'm going to do this. And you work on the idea. So some ideas come to me. And I said, you know what? I'm going to just act on the idea. Positive, good ideas came to me. And I, I, it literally came to me like about two or three days ago. And I started. I just went and I did them. And another idea come, I'm doing them. I can't remember this. Because you know what will happen? If you don't do that, the man will say, no, make no sense to do that. Nobody now go business. Nobody now go listen. Nobody now do. Oh, really? Oh, really? Look at L.A. Lewis. Whether you want to consider him talented, yes or no. That guy there was a Somolius. And thing. he spray painted his name all over. Um, I remember when I was going to ask, I used to see his name spray. And I, I thought it was a foreigner. I didn't know it was a Jamaican guy. But the guy had a goal. The guy had a mission. And he decided to start with spray painting the name. You understand? And now in hindsight, I'm thinking back. I remembered. You, I used to see it and ignore, but I saw it. I saw it. No care where my government did see him name. It come like all when you dream, you see him name. And the guy come up with the You want to say him crazy? Like, That's fine. But it, it has taken him to his stardom. He's making money. And he feels he's contributing. Maybe he is. You don't know. Maybe he's influencing somebody to do something good. We don't know. I can't make that assumption. I don't know him. But what I'm simply saying, he didn't give up on his dream. He did not give up. He wanted to become popular. He wanted to be just like myself. And he did not give up. He kept at it. He kept at it. So he pushed it. He pushed it. He kept spray painting his name. Kept doing whatever else he needed to do. Took him a few years. But look at where he's at. You follow what I'm saying to you? So the only way you, for us to really become wealthy as we want to become wealthy, we have to be incessant. We have to be consistent. We have to be every day at our goals and our dreams. Write it down. Say it every day. I shall become this. I shall become that. This is what I'm going to achieve. It. You have not because you ask not. The Bible says ask and ye ask to receive. Seek and ye shall find. And if you knock, the door will be opened unto you. Simple as that. And when it says you when it says ask, faith without works is that you have to do your part. You have to be at it. Don't worry about I hear uh, this is what Les Brown said. You don't have to be great to get started, but you have to start to become great. All of those top persons that we look at as top people, Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, persons who are not even as wealthy as those, the regular, you know, some artists, you know. Um, that you want to look at all these artists. They did not start great, no matter how great they are now. They did not start great. And they became great. They, they were determined. They decided say, if it takes every day for me to set aside an hour. To work at whatever it is that I want. It means that I will set aside an hour. It depends on what you want to achieve. I know what I want to achieve. As I'm tired to see us as a black race. In the minority. The see, I mean almost minute minority. Achieving wealth and prosperity. When I think of the, the real and real wealthy people, the only name that really comes to, come to my mind right now, I'm talking about in terms of the billionaires now. Come let me think the very beginning. You know, it's Oprah Winfrey. The only person. And I'm like, really? And the amount of other billionaire names you can call white persons I'm talking. Whether white, Indian, Chinese, you can think of on the, like that. You know, we are people, we are somebody to, you know, we're important to, you know, we're irrespective of what may have gone in terms of slavery. And, you, you know, us thinking that we're, we are, I am believe no one. Me important just as a white man, Indian man, Chinese man, me not care what nobody want to tell me, said that is my take, take on it. I am just as important. I'm equally important as they are. They weren't better, made better than I am. And I was made better than they were made. So when we see these people prospering, they, 
is that about that they just get up and, and and you know what happened they, they also follow what the bible says it says pass down your store up treasures pass it down to the next generation next generation continuing so even if somebody is born in wealth you understand it is what their four parents did <laughs> Is what their four parents did, and the others who get, uh, generate the wealth and, and they're able to pass it down. You think they just get it a boof boof and do a little craziness with it, and it passed down? No, make them know use it wisely or invest it wisely and see what happen. Them start back at square one again or never, or them just break that cycle of generational blessings. Why would a God own such a beautiful earth? Want us, want us to be poor and pauperized, begging? That makes sense to anybody? And that teaching used to be, I realize, used to happen a lot in churches, especially back in the day, whether rural or urban churches, because persons believe that if you're poor, then you will see God. <laughs> if that were the case, and a lot of these great men of old, oh Lord, I wonder what is, what would, what, what, where their soul is right now, if that is the case. We have created this consistent cycle of subservience and poverty among the black race. I despise it world without end. Amen. I'm allergic to it. I'm allergic to poverty. I am allergic to poverty. You know, like when oil and water just can't mix. It's worse than that for me. I'm allergic to subservience. I'm allergic to mediocrity. My body only responds to excellence. My body only responds to wealth. My body only responds to riches. It responds to great health. It only responds to positive things. My only regret is that I wish I didn't know this at least maybe nine, ten years ago. Maybe I heard it in passing, but maybe I wasn't ready to hear it. Who knows? But I'm not going to dwell on the regrets. But that's the only thing I probably would say if I was to talk about any little, you know, down thing. A time for we as a black race, rise up and take on the mantle of prosperity. Take on the mantle of wealth. Just like our white counterparts, our Chinese counterparts. Because we are somebody too. We are important as well. You have to tell yourself that. No, we are not inferior. We are not a photocopy. We are not a knockoff. We are the real deal. You think God in his mind was said, sure. They are they side people. Making any, any little thing happen to them. No, 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 no. God wishes for us to prosper our soul, our mind, our body, every part of us to prosper. But we have to decide that we have to make that decision because remember, God gave us choices. He gave us volition. So we have to now make that concerted effort every day. It can't be every other day or every week. It has to be every day. It may not be at the same strength every single day because every day, you know, carries a different kind of, uh, carries a, not only a different kind of feeling, but it carries different activities that may take place. So every day it may not be the, at the same strength, but I, if it is that we as the black race decide that, listen, no more poverty, no more, no more, no more poverty. We have to be incessant. We have to be at it every single day. Until we attain it. Until it's not Oprah Winfrey name alone. Calling at the witches. And a fear name one for calling night. Tony and Tamara Baker's name must call in night. Your name must call in night. The next black brother. The next black sister name must call in night. But we have to work at it every single solitary day. We have to be at it every day. Every single day, no nope, barring none until we achieve it. Barring none until we achieve it. And that's my declaration, that's my motto. So I'm encouraging you to 
I don't know who wants to join me on this 30-day challenge. I'm going after it. Write down your goals. You pray over them. You speak them into being. You, you declare them. You And when the negative thoughts come, you, you just if it means to take up the paper while the negative thoughts are on and you read what is on your paper in terms of what you're going to achieve, you do that. You're going to conquer those negative thoughts with positive ones and you work at it. So if it is that you want to become a, a business owner, you read books on it, attend seminars, uh, give out your business cards, let people see your talents, whatever it is you sow that seed, it will grow. It will come to fruition. It will pass. We will, we shall, we must conquer poverty. In Jesus' name, we are conquering this thing as a black race. No more of it. I am tired of it now. We're going to achieve financial freedom. We are going to be the lenders and not the borrowers. We're the heads and not the tails. No more. That's the road I'm on. I'm encouraging you to join me on that road. So that our names can be called among the greats. Not just called among the greats like that, but to really have contributed greatly to a country, to the world at large. Because of our determination that, listen, we're going to make it too. Our names are going to be called among the, the top people, them, the Bill Gates, the Warren Buffett, the Oprah Winfrey's, and all of those people. Because we decide that we not give up. We determine that we're not giving up. That's the reason why they are rich enough. Because they, the only difference is that when the negatives come, they say, eh, 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 eh. negative, I conquer you. But although you're saying I'm this, I know I'm that. And I'm, this is what I'm going after. And I'm going to work at it unceasingly until I get it. That's the difference. That is the difference. Remember to tithe. Give 10% to God. 10% of your salary. You give it to God. And you give otherwise. And you save 10% at least. We're going to conquer it. We're going to... Oh gosh, I wish... I train and I wish we didn't know this at least, may say. A few years ago. We just never understand it. I really wish I did. I re uh, anyway, that makes no sense for cry over spilled me. Me just I look for a slingshot effect. Boom! Where me just achieve my goals and my desire. And this time I'm going after it. Full force, full speed ahead with everything inside of me. With God's help. So I wish the very same to you. For you, I wish that you all prosper, even as your soul prospers. God, his, God says he knows the plans he has for you, not to harm you, but to prosper you and to give you a bright future and a good hope. This can only be done depending on the choices that you make. No more poverty depends on you. I don't even, even if I may not have money now, I still not consider me. I call myself poor or broken and not call it. I, don't even, I hate using those words. Unless I'm using um, the the preposition before i am not broke i am not poor the not is that a preposition whatever it wants to be whatever word that wants to be that i'm using those words i'm not calling myself broke or poor no more i'm, I'm whether you want to think it's folly or foolish or laughable that's fine that's okay but I'm, I'm declaring I will never be broke and never be poor again in Jesus' name. Never be broke, never be poor again. I shall never be broke and never be poor again in Jesus' name with God's help. I shall never, ever, ever be poor and never be broke. I will make that a reality because of God. I will make, that will become my reality. That's my reality. I'm making that my reality. I'm working at that for that to be my reality. Where I am, I, Tony and Tamara Baker, and the lender, not the borrower. I am the giver even more than how I've given. Even more. That is the kind of individual I'm becoming. That is my declaration. That is my determination. And I wish the very same to, for you. I really wish the same for you. I wouldn't mind if ever one of us become wealthy overnight. I know it's not possible overnight. But I would love to see just as how I'm up there making it, you're up there making it. What I wish for myself, I wish for you. What I wish for myself, I wish the very same for you. I say this sincerely. 
So my brothers, my sisters, my friends on Facebook, take up the 30-day challenge. I'm doing it starting today. Write down what it is that you want to achieve. Write it down. Write it down personal to you. You know what you want. You know what you desire in your heart. Write them down. Them. It. Write it down. And you pray over it. Say, I pray over it. And every day, as many times as you can throughout the day, you say them. You know what you're doing? You're training your mind differently now to give you further ideas how to achieve your goals and your desires. No matter, and if it don't matter, don't watch when it looks simple because that's what the negative mind is going to say. Lada, this, what kind of foolish is that? You go, this or whatever it tells your mind tells you to do because we're, you know, we're all creative beings. No matter, just do it. Just do it. No matter what you want, and if the negative thoughts come, just say, I'm still doing it anyway. That's how you're going to do it. That's what you're going to accomplish. And he says, when you do that for the next 30 days and continuing, that's where you become su successful. Success then brings you your wealth. Gonna try. Have to try. Have to do it. Have to go at it. Have to my people. So I wish you all a beautiful afternoon. And I wish that you prosper even as your soul prosper. May God bless you. Have a great day.